Radio. J.P. Morgan's, the most powerful bank in the world, 2023, marked the financial system that tended to a second global economic crisis. The collapse of Silicon Valley banks, Credit Suisse owned by UBS and First Republic owned by J.P. Morgan. This crisis, which marked the first half of 2023, plunged the world into memories of the 2008 subprime crisis. When these big banks closed their doors, Others saw it as a capital increase opportunity. We can see this with J.P. Morgan, who rose right to the top in Forbes Global 2000 list. In this video, you will learn the history of J.P. Morgan, its beginnings, its achievements, and how it was able to rise to the top of the Forbes Global 2000 ranking about J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan Chase & Co., also known as JPMC, was founded in 1799 by two businessmen, John Pierpont Morgan and Anthony Drexel, under the name Drexel Morgan & Co., with its head office in New York. Listed on the stock exchange on October 6, 1978, it has a capital of $435.60 billion. It has 2,922,289,923 land titles with 296,896,877 employees. J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. is a global financial services company. It operates in four different sectors, consumer and community banking, CCB, corporate and investment bank, CIB, commercial banking, CB, and asset and wealth management, AWM. The consumer and community banking sector offers deposit and investment services to customers, lending, deposit, cash management, and payment solutions to small businesses, mortgage servicing and loan origination, residential mortgages and home equity loans, credit card, auto loan, and leasing services. The corporate and investment bank sector provides investment banking products and services, including corporate strategy and structure advice, equity and debt capital raising services, as well as loan origination and syndication services, wholesale and cross-border payments, cash and derivatives, risk management solutions, prime brokerage, and research. This sector also offers security services, including custody, accounting and fund administration, and securities lending products for asset managers, insurance companies, and public and private investment funds. The commercial banking sector provides financial solutions, including loans, investment banking, and asset management services to small businesses, large and medium-sized enterprises, local governments and nonprofit organizations, as well as commercial real estate banking services to investors, developers, and owners of multifamily housing, as well as office, retail, industrial, and affordable housing. The asset and wealth management sector offers multi-asset investment management solutions across equities, fixed income, alternative solutions, and money market funds to institutional clients and individual investors, as well as retirement products and services, brokerage, custody, trust, and estate services, loans, mortgages, deposits, and investment management products. The company also provides ATM, online, mobile, and phone banking services. When it was founded, this merchant banking association originally served Europeans investing in the United States. In 1890, John Pierre Morgan had the brilliant idea of financing railroad construction in the United States. This financing was spread over several years, and the bank's contribution is estimated at a quarter of the total financing. For the record, the railway network has been consolidated from the 1890s. Before the financial crisis of 1893, the American network suffered from overcapacity, chronic underinvestment, and excessive fragmentation between hundreds of companies. 
A consolidation of the sector is necessary, and the 1893 crisis serves as a reminder. In the middle of the 19th century, the railway network was neither integrated nor efficient. Diversity of gauge, no connections in some cities, maintenance of manual operations, signage and heterogeneous train control systems, poor infrastructure such as iron rails and wooden bridges. The standardization of the network essentially requires the adoption of the same track gauge, 1435. During the 1890s, further improvements were made to modernize and facilitate rail transport, more urban roads, the construction of peripheral lines by passing urban centers, multiplication of central stations or diffusion of standard rolling stock. At the beginning of the 20th century, the railway network of the United States was fully integrated and standardized, which further strengthens its dominant position for the transport of goods and passengers. Between 1896 and 1916, railway construction resumed, reaching a historic extension in 1917 with more than 408,000 kilometers of track, compared to 364,012 years earlier. And J.P. Morgan has played an important role in this evolution. Through this state aid, J.P. Morgan is seen as a very important bank as it wins the trust of Americans for whom the reconstruction of the country was very important. It is seen as a bank interested in the development and advancement of the country. J.P. Morgan's work is not limited to the United States. It was also able to establish itself in Europe. In Europe, the bank financed the war effort and granted an initial sum of 250 million French francs to France in order to support the Franco-Prussian War. Shortly afterwards, as part of the war effort, the bank granted $500 million in financing to help the United Kingdom and France. Strong ties were created between the French state and the bank. In gratitude, the French state offered the bank a building located at number 14 of the Place Vendôme in Paris. This allowed the bank to be an essential ally during the reconstruction of France and England after the war. J.P. Morgan's Acquisitions From the 1950s to the 1980s, Drexel Morgan & Co. operated numerous mergers and was one of the 12 U.S. banks with the most branches outside the U.S. In 2000, the merger of the four oldest banking institutions in New York, Morgan, Chase, Chemical & Manufacturers, Hanover birthed J.P. Morgan Chase & Company. The fusion was born of the fact that these American institutions were suffering from unfavorable market trends and the ideal solution to save them was a merger. This resulted to a gigantic, world-renowned bank. The banks that merged were already big banks. Before the merger, Chemical Bank was the third largest bank in the USA with $182.9 billion in assets and over 39,000 employees. So this merger could only result in one gigantic bank. Among the group's acquisitions are Neovest Holdings, Collegiate Funding Services, Fisacure, Exign Corporation, Climate Care, UBS Commodities, Canada Limited. J.P. Morgan's success is not only due to its mergers and acquisitions. We believe it is a bank that has taken advantage of the instability of the stock market and the economic crises that have shaken the world of finance. It all began with Washington Mutual in 2008, when the big bank fell victim to the subprime crisis. This bank, which was the largest savings bank in the United States, was bought out by its competitor, J.P. Morgan. On September 25, 2008, the 119th anniversary of Washington Mutual's founding, the Office of Thrift Supervision, OTS, the primary federal regulator of U.S. savings banks, announced that it was seizing the failing bank and selling its healthy assets to J.P. Morgan Chase. This purchase made J.P. Morgan the largest bank in the United States. May 2023 marked the end for First Republic Bank. The San Francisco Bank, which had lost 97% of its stock market value since the rout of Silicon Valley Bank in March, has been dismantled. And J.P. Morgan, America's largest bank by assets, assumed all deposits and substantially all assets, 
as announced by the FDIC, the regulator that guarantees bank deposits. On May 1, 2023, the U.S. authorities took control of the regional bank First Republic and sold the vast majority of its assets to J.P. Morgan Chase, thus marking the second largest bankruptcy in U.S. history and hoping to put an end to the banking crisis that emerged in March. The institution had been under considerable pressure since the collapse of two institutions with similar profiles and signature. But First Republic failed to come up with a satisfactory bailout plan, and when it confirmed that many customers had withdrawn more than $100 billion in deposits in the first quarter, its already ailing stock plunged. The distinct fact between the 2008 crisis and that of 2023 is that the two biggest banks that failed were taken over by J.P. Morgan. Why is J.P. Morgan unaffected by the subprime crisis and the crisis caused by rising interest rates in 2023? The subprime crisis is a financial crisis that affected the United States at the beginning of July 2007 and spread throughout the world. Subprime mortgages are property loans whose interest rates varied according to the value of the property they used to buy. The more the property was worth, the lower the interest paid by the borrower. When the property lost its value, the interest rate increased. The First American Bank was partly responsible for the financial crisis of 2008, which rose in the aftermath of the overprime crisis and the collapse of Lehman Brothers. J.P. Morgan had misrepresented securities to investors by concealing their risky nature. As a result, thousands of Americans lost their homes. J.P. Morgan also froze Lakeman Brothers' accounts, forcing them to report two days ahead of schedule, causing their bankruptcy in the world's biggest economic crisis. Good management. So, does acquiring rival banks or destroying rival banks make a bank the most powerful? Having lots of money doesn't make a bank the most powerful. Bad management can bring down a high capital bank in a fraction of a second. So what's really keeping JP Morgan at the top? Since the 2008 crisis, JP Morgan's CEO hasn't changed. So isn't its rise to the top due to good management? As we saw in March, 2023, the collapse of banks such as Silicon Valley Bank and Credit Suisse was partly due to poor risk management. So who is this CEO who managed the two biggest crises in the history of finance? Jamie Dimon worked in banking for 19 years before joining JP Morgan. He started at the American Express, which he left in 1985 to follow Sandy Well, also employed at the American Express. Together, they bought commercial credit and at the age of 30, Jamie Dimon was already operating as a chief financial officer helping to turn the company around. In 1998, after several mergers, they formed a major financial conglomerate called Citigroup. Unfortunately, he was unable to enjoy the fruits of his labor, as that same year, Sandy Well asked him to resign. According to uncertain sources, this was due to his refusal to recruit Well's daughter. In 2000, he returned to a new base and became chief executive officer of Bank One Corporation, the country's fifth largest bank at that time. Four years later, in July 2004, J.P. Morgan bought Bank One Corporation and Jamie became president and chief operating officer of the merged company. His work took him to the very top of the company and on January 1st, 2006, he was appointed CEO of J.P. Morgan. On December 31st of the same year, he was appointed chairman of the board of J.P. Morgan and president of the bank in 2008. Since then, he has cleverly managed the bank that has become the leading bank in the United States. The American bank focuses on organic growth. Its strategy is based on two main pillars, sustainable investment and the continued pursuit of excellence. ESG stands for environmental, social, and governance. ESG can be described as a set of practices, policies, procedures, measures that organizations implement to limit the negative impact of their activities on the environment, or to enhance the positive impact on the environment, or to enhance the positive impact on the environment's organizations. 
Sustainable investment is first and foremost a priority for the group. ESG criteria are becoming an essential component of J.P. Morgan Chase's investment strategies. The second priority is in line with the group's ambition for excellence by always putting customers at the heart of their business. This builds customer loyalty and confidence. J.P. Morgan has been at the center of a number of high-profile scandals throughout its history. From its involvement in slavery in the 19th century to its involvement in the collapse of Leifman Brothers, its complicity in the Madoff affair, and various real estate-related scams. Despite all these scandals, it remains the world's most powerful bank. Here are just a few of the scandals in which the bank has been involved in throughout its history. J.P. Morgan Scandals Involvement in Slavery In January 2005, the bank acknowledged its involvement in slavery in the United States before it was abolished in 1865. Indeed, the two ancestral banks, which much later merged to become J.P. Morgan Chase, had accepted thousands of slaves as collateral for loans. Bernard Madoff Affair American investment bank J.P. Morgan Chase, the financial institution used by swindler Bernard Madoff, agreed to pay $2.6 billion to federal authorities to avoid prosecution. Bernard Madoff was sentenced in 2009 to 150 years in prison for scamming. Estimated between 23 and over $65 billion, depending on whether interest is included or not. His scam, which consisted of dipping into the finances of new clients to pay off or reimburse older ones, had come to light in December 2008 when a growing number of investors demanded their money back. For its part, J.P. Morgan was accused by the authorities of ignoring clues that would have enabled it to put a quicker end to Mr. Madoff's misdeeds perpetrator of the biggest swindle in history. The amount of the transaction is in the high range of the sums reported by the American press. The majority of the proceeds will go to Mr. Madoff's victims. The liquidator of the Madoff affair, Irving Picard, accused J.P. Morgan, which housed Bernard Madoff's account for two decades, of complicity and fraud, believing that it had knowingly ignored numerous red flags indicating that Mr. Madoff's money was the proceeds of a fraudulent operation. As a result, the liquidator has claimed a sum of $20 billion from the bank to compensate the victims. London Whale J.P. Morgan fined $920 million. The American bank, J.P. Morgan, has agreed to pay fines to four American and British regulators as penance for its excessive betting on credit derivatives, which cost it billions of dollars in losses. A scandal known as the London Whale. The London Whale was the nickname given to Bruno Eichsill, a French trader at a London unit of J.P. Morgan, because of his huge, risky holdings in credit derivatives. By early 2012, these had become too visible. Other traders turned against him, forcing the bank to sell off his holdings. J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon initially downplayed the whale affair, calling it a storm in a teapot. A few months later, the bank admitted to losses of over $6 billion. Regulators blame J.P. Morgan for deficiencies in its internal control systems. The Securities and Exchange Commission has also accused J.P. Morgan of falsifying its financial results and states in its press release that the bank has acknowledged the facts and admitted violating the law. J.P. Morgan will pay $200 million to the Securities and Exchange Commission, $300 million to its regulator OCC, and $200 million to the Federal Reserve Fed. While in Great Britain, it will pay $220 million to the Financial Conduct Authority, FCA. Jeffrey Epstein Affair J.P. Morgan Chase reached an agreement with the victims of the financier accused of sex trafficking of minors. The American bank had maintained a business relationship with the deceased billionaire who was accused of sexual exploitation of minors. The company avoided a media trial. The parties believe that this agreement is in the best interests of all, particularly the victims who survived Mr. Epstein's terrible abuses. The lawsuit launched in 2022 by an unidentified woman 
accused J.P. Morgan Chase of having facilitated Jeffrey Epstein's actions by enabling him to finance his activities. The bank denied these accusations. The financier, whose wealth is unclear, was a client of J.P. Morgan Chase between 1998 and 2013, before the bank finally decided to sever their business relationship. The financial terms of the agreement were not disclosed. The agreement puts an end to a class action, and the sum paid in damages amounts to $290 million, according to Reuters. The money will be shared by more than 150 of Jeffrey Epstein's victims. Manipulation of Precious Metals Prices U.S. Bank J.P. Morgan Chase has agreed to pay $920 million for manipulating prices on the precious metals and treasury bill markets, the largest financial penalty ever imposed in such a case. The settlement resolves lawsuits brought by the Department of Justice and the U.S. Securities and Commodities Regulators, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the Commodities and Futures Trading Commission. They accuse the bank's traders including department heads, of manipulating the prices of gold, silver, platinum and palladium, as well as those of treasury bonds, for at least eight years by placing tens of thousands of orders they had no intention of carrying out, a practice known in English as spoofing. In this way, they provided other market players with a false picture of the real supply and demand on the market and took advantage of this to make money or avoid losses. The incriminating facts took place from 2008 to 2016 in the New York, London and Singapore offices of the institution, the leading U.S. bank in terms of assets. The authorities also criticized J.P. Morgan for failing to act adequately to put an end to these practices despite numerous warning signs, notes a CFTC press release. According to the CFTC, the fine is the largest ever imposed in a spoofing case. Although J.P. Morgan is the world's leading investment bank, it is also the bank at the heart of the biggest scandals in the world of finance. Despite the colossal fines it pays for the scandals it has caused, it has managed to stay on top and avoid bankruptcy. Its chief executive officer, Jamie Dimon, could be considered one of the best in the banking world. Without good management, any company, no matter how powerful, would be dragged down by scandal and lose its customers' trust. The world's largest bank owes its solidity to its glorious past when it helped rebuild countries after the Second World War and built railroads. If you liked the video, please subscribe, like and share it, and don't forget to click on the notification bell so you don't miss our next video. See you soon on Mazel Media, information at the heart of the world.